for a few of your questions, and I'll run the mic. Do you want to? Okay, great. Well, why don't you why don't you show those photographs while I while I read? So, in closing today, Kozo asked me to read a beautiful piece of writing that he did on the occasion of an exhibition that is it still on view, Kozo? An exhibition of his most recent photographs of the American Road, which is currently on view at his gallery in Tokyo. I often ask myself why I go on road trips. A road trip is a meditation. I just face the view that looks through the windshield, make a few promises of my own, and settle down in the driver's seat. Surrounding webs glimmer in the beginning. Ordinary and less ordinary sceneries are like 35 millimeter snapshots. When the time and distance overlap just right, I then sink into the space time of that gap. There are numerous manners when I'm seated, but I peep into 20 or more of my imaginary drawers and close them with new thoughts and ideas. This is my decorum and this is my meditation, obviously a bit different from a driver's high. There were times when even if I had a destination, I could not find what I was looking for. I would keep telling myself that what I discovered there is not what I had imagined, and I would turn on my heels and start for another goal without looking back. When the endurance time goes on for weeks or a month, it feels as if I become like Bodhidharma, but road trips nowadays are changing. Before, a destination was a byproduct. Now, it gives me a goal. But still, the real object is to go on road trips again and again and again. The very day only exists that day. So yesterday, I left a northwestern town that I stopped by in the late afternoon, took the interstate south for another 10 miles, and finally located familiar looking accommodations from the highway. Among those, I chose a motel that had a sign with a big eight and took a room. When I used to use a camera that did not require a tripod, my voyage started immediately after I got off the plane. I would drive for hundreds of miles from day one, as if Skanda was pushing my back, as if I were to miss those moments if I would not keep going. A prairie that never reaches its end, a burning red sunset glow looking up at the Milky Way, covering a stadium of stars, and feeling the still warm earth from the daylight on my back. What forced me to do this, I do not know. I know it was not just youth or vitality. It was probably that period when I simply had to encounter the yet to see lands or unknown moments like a galloping horse. For good or ill, my behavior and activities back then are now like a dream to me and bring back nostalgia. Still treading on air after I fell back asleep, the repetitive sounds of a freight coupler shifting wake me up. I can feel the dry morning light filling the air through a heavyweight paisley curtain. I'm getting a late breakfast this morning on the corner of the central strip that has only a blinking single aspect. There's a modest cafe waiting to order an egg over easy and a side of bacon, a mug of coffee with way too heavy for my sleepy hand is placed on a formica tabletop with a greeting of good morning. I already know my last supper will be from a greasy spoon. I turn a huge knob and go outside. The sun is already high, and in a wink, I absorb into the familiar looking scenery of the black asphalt that cuts into the vast plain way off to the highway. In the distance, I can see a silhouette of mountains that looks like a woman lying down, somewhat teasingly, looking down with remaining snow on the crest. This distance that leads to the heart of the mountain is just the right space time for my road trip and the mountain pass that curves a huge S will guide me to the first byproduct of this journey, to Topaz internment campsite. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Kozo. Help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so we've got time for a few questions if you've got them, and I'll run the mic.
So, Kozo, how do you carry the 16 by 20 camera? Oh, oh. <laughs> still by myself. Wow. Yes, no assistant. Yes, because when uh, first in the big site, 20, we have a uh, 20 by 24 film still. And I scale, you know, I chose in a computer. I, away, away I get it. And then a couple of plays made it. And I tried to do uh, how much I weight. And they said, oh, almost 30 kilo gurai. Dattanode, but I see camera o Sankyakuni Reni Noseru Kotonga Dekina Omosa Dattantis. So it was 30, kilo, uh, not 30 kilograms, and to put that on top of a tripod was impossible for me, so I decided against that. The Jurogni Jua, Junana Kilo Dattantis. The 16 by 20 is 17 kilograms. The Watashiga Jibunte. And I can handle that, so I decided to go with that size. You're welcome. Uh, I have two questions uh, for you. One, could you uh, compare the role of the car in the American and Japanese psyche? And the other question is, do you think there's anything problematic about making a portrait of someone who you uh, would not offer a ride to? It's a gotcha question. Well, うん。私は、えっと、車は、あの、アメリカの車そのものは、あの、ウェスタンカルチャーだと思ってるから、それは、あの、それを日本へ持って行って、日本人が作ったんで、元はアメリカのことなんで、あの、日本の車だとは、日本で日本の車に気持ちが入ってるとは思っていません。は、に、車は車だと思ってます。So, um, he believe I believe that uh, cars are a western uh, part of western culture and yeah. and uh, he, I don't really believe that it really um, bears anything like cultural in, in terms of like Japanese or American, he doesn't really, I don't, sorry, I don't really um, differentiate between a Japanese or American car or American psyche or anything like that. It's just that, it just is. And uh, あったから、あの、あ、それでその話をした時に、あの、彼に何か欲しいかっていうことを、あと、あの、フィニックスで話したんだけど、その時に、あなた何か欲しいものないかって言ったら、あ、彼はタバコが欲しいって言ったから、私
時によく撮りましたけど大きいカメラだとふあの太陽の光がたくさんの光が私には必要なんでいつも 10, 10時までなると夕方の3時までが私の時間だと今思ってあの撮ってます、うん、10時から3時っていうのは太陽が上にあってたくさん光がある時が自分の光なんです。So when I was taking pictures with a smaller camera, I preferred to take pictures in the morning or、uh, when、uh, the sun was setting. But when I transitioned over to my bigger camera, I need more sunlight. So I tend to focus on 10 to 3. あの太陽が上にあって、right、ものにで right above, 私が後ろからものに当たってる時がを見るで撮ることが 100% そういう写真を撮ってます後ろ太陽が私の後ろにあって撮るものに光が当たってる時に撮る That's when the sun is behind me and it's,、um, it's shining on the object that I want to take a photograph of はい。Uh, can you describe? Would you please describe the、uh, work you do after you've taken the photograph? In other words, what sort of work do you do in the dark room, or what sort of work do you do on the computer? Uh, どういうふうにあの写真を作るっていうことはあの。あの彼は知ってるのかなダークルームのことを知ってますか、うん、あのそんなに特別なことはしません。原風を変えて、例えば今,今回も 8x10 のカメラを持ってきて、シカゴから旅してきて、フィルムを今35枚撮ってます。それを日本へ帰って、普通に現像してプリントする。そんなに特別なことはしてません。So I don't really do anything special.、Um, I take photographs and then、um, I bring them back to Japan and then in Japan I do the、um, dark room activities, <laughs> the dark room work、um, where I process the film. Is that answering your question? Well, it half answers it. I mean, Ansel Adams used to do, spend hours in the dark room burning and、uh, dodging. And I'm wondering if、uh, you do any of that. I do not so much. It's a, just a, it's a negative, from negative, it's a, not, so, not so much. Sometimes I would be the dodging, the, but I don't just, you know. Not so much to dutching or the crop. And the Got time for one more question. I saw one there in the back. Since the world is in color, how do you imagine shooting it in black and white? I mean, can you see what it's going to look like in black and white when you're shooting it? The, あのさっき言ったでしょあの私にとってカラーで見えるのは一つのトーンとしかとして理解してるもちろんあの普通写真を撮る時じゃなくて生活してる時にはいろいろなカラーを見ようとしてるし。でも写真を撮るときにはカラーの写真は一つのトーンでとして見てるでも白黒の写真だと10個ぐらいのトーンがある中でそれを調節できることが私にとっての写真を作ることなの。When I'm in my daily life, when I'm living my daily life. But when I'm taking pictures, I feel that color is actually one tone. And black and white has 10 tones, and I like to work with those 10 tones. I try to do not tones into different, and、uh, I make it the, this gray, is, you know, like、uh, the black, close by black tone. And、uh, it's why I t 
taken picture, the, the black and the white. Let's have another big round of applause for Koza. Thank you very much. And I want to give a special thank you to today's translator, Keiko Shimizu, who's with us from the Department of East Asian Studies. It was your first time interpreting, right? And before you all take off, a couple plugs and announcements. I do want to plug our membership program. So this was our inaugural members event today. So all of you who already are members, thank you so much for coming out and for supporting the center. And for those of you who might want to become members, you can find out more information on our website or ask at the check-in table outside. And coming up on November 4th, we have an event called Portraits of CCP where we're honoring two very important figures in the center's history. The center's founder and former UA president, John Schaefer, and Tony Celentano, who's here today and has dedicated countless hours of his life to forwarding the mission of the center. It's gonna be a great event, tickets are on sale now, and there is a member's discount, so it's another incentive to join. Thank you all so much for coming. <laughs>